compromise. Good day all of you who are watching. It's wonderful to be with you again to study together and have a look at the book of Galatians which is a very deep and exciting letter that Paul wrote to the Galatians and I think that we all have to receive a lot from this book because there is a lot of revelation, a lot of things that we Christians need to know and experience and live in our daily life. So we stopped last time at verse 10 in the second chapter of Galatians. We shall continue as from verse 11. Here we are going to see a very exciting scenario or situation. We are going to read it. It says, Now when Peter had come to Antioch, I withstood him to his face, because he was to be blamed. For, being cert for before certain men came from James, he would eat with the Gentiles. But when they came, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing those who were of the circumcision. And the rest of the Jews also played the hypocrite with him. Or in the words, with Peter. So that even Barnabas was carried away with their hypocrisy. But when I saw that they were not straightforward about the truth of the gospel, I said to Peter before them all, If you being a Jew live in the manner of Gentiles and not as the Jews, why do you compel Gentiles to live as Jews? We're going to explain that a little bit later. We who are Jews by nature are not sinners of the Gentiles. And it continues. So, what's the situation here? Now, let's say first that this situation probably came about before the problem that arose in Antioch in Acts chapter 15. We know what happened. Because when there was there were Christians from Jerusalem who had come to Antioch and had tried to influence many Christians that circumcision in the flesh was the way to salvation. And we know that Paul and Barnabas went to Jerusalem to meet with the apostles to discuss that situation. Why did they go to Jerusalem? Because these Christians came from Jerusalem. So they went to Jerusalem to meet with the apostles and the elders of the church. And we know the story. You can read it in the book, in, in Acts chapter 15. What happened is that then Peter and the apostles, what did they do? They approved and gave their support to the apostle Paul. What support? Paul came and said, listen guys, there are, there are some Christians from Jerusalem who had come there with a doctrine that is not the truth. In fact, it's a doctrine that goes against the freedom and the liberty in Christ. It goes against the doctrine of righteousness by faith in Jesus Christ. So he discussed that with the apostles and the apostles said, OK, you are right. We are going to give you a letter so that you will go back to Antioch and you will declare that, OK, we understand there is freedom in Christ. There's no need to be circumcised in the flesh to obtain salvation. That was the situation. So, that was confirmed in the letter. But what is happening here? But here, 
after the Antioch problem and the letter that was sent, that was after the situation which occurred now with Paul and Peter, Peter was free in his heart. Why? Because he was sitting with the Gentiles. The Jewish law states that you can't even eat and sit with Gentiles. But he was free. He was free and he was sitting and eating with the Gentiles until Jews were with James came. Came in their surroundings. And when Peter saw that they were Jews, that they were coming, he was afraid. He was afraid of their reaction. It is not that Peter was not free. Yes, he was free because he was sitting with them. He was an apostle of Christ. He was sitting with them because he knew that when Jesus Christ came and died on the cross, he set us free from the curse of the law. And now we are free as a Jew to sit with the Gentile, who is a born-again Christian, we can sit together and share and have a meal together. But when the Jews came, he was afraid of them. And what did he do? The Bible says that when certain men came from James, Peter would eat with the Gentiles, but when they came, he withdrew. He left them. He left these Gentiles. Because he feared the reaction of the Jews. These Jews who would stand for Judaism. They would not be happy. They knew Peter. They were of the church of Jerusalem. These Jews were probably not free. And they saw Peter. And when Peter knew what would be their reaction, he compromised. He compromised because he then withdrew himself from these Christian Gentiles and certainly that caused a big problem. And what happened? He says, the rest of the Jews played the hypocrite with him. In other words, they fell into the same trap. So that even Barnabas was carried away with their hypocrisy. In other words, the Apostle Peter became a stumbling block to those that were there, even Barnabas, who himself, afterwards the Bible says, was carried away with their hypocrisy. What's the point here? Paul became angry. Why? Because Peter, who was free from the law, because of his fear of the reaction of the Jews, he compromised. In other words, he became, he acted like an hypocrite. Because he did what he did not believe for fear of the Jews. He did not believe that it was wrong now for a Christian Jew or for a Jew Christian to eat with a Christian Gentile. There was no problem in that. He understood that. So he was free, but he could not face the opposition and the persecution and he acted with hypocrisy. So... He feared the reactions of the Jews, and yet he was free from the law. That was the reason of the reaction of Paul. To oppose him and stand him to his face. He rebuked him. He confronted him. He opposed him straight to his face, in front of everybody. 
That's how much Paul was ready to defend the gospel of liberty, of grace, of freedom. He couldn't care who would say what, but Peter did not act like him. Didn't have the same reaction like him. Now, let's look at the life of Peter to see where he is at. Now, we know that about 40 years after the resurrection of Christ, many years after, he was the instrument for the conversion of Cornelius. Who was Cornelius? He was a Gentile. He was not a Jew. And we know the story that when Peter was praying on the roof, he had a vision, and God was trying to tell, ask him, go, go to Cornelius and share the gospel with him. But with the vision that he had, God said to him, there were unclean animals in a cloth. And God said to him, eat. But he could not eat because as a Jew, he was not allowed to eat unclean animals. So he resisted God until, after many times, he said, okay, I will do it. And at the same time, we know, that there was a knock at the door and some people came from Cornelius to the house of Peter asking him to go to Cornelius' house so because he wanted to listen to what the Peter had to tell him. The Holy Spirit convicted Peter at that moment that he had to go to Cornelius, a Gentile, who wanted to hear from Peter. And we know the story that when Peter went there and as he started to speak, the Holy Spirit came and fell upon Cornelius and the whole house was born again. Cornelius was the first Gentile to be born again. But you see, Peter as an apostle was still struggling with the law. When he got that vision, he said, no God, I can't eat unclean animals, because this is according to the Judaism, Jewish law. According to Jewish law, I can't, you see. But God wanted to set him free. And finally, he understood. And in Acts chapter 11, maybe we can read that, so that we can see how after that experience, the Apostle Peter became bold to defend the gospel of freedom because when the Apostles and the Brethren, chapter 11, verse 1, Acts of the Apostles, now the Apostles and Brethren who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. And when Peter came up to Jerusalem, those of the circumcision contended with him. In other words, what happened? saying, you went into uncircumcised men and ate with them. But Peter explained it to them in order from the beginning, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision, an object descending like a great sheet, let down from heaven by four corners, and it came to me. When I observed it intently and considered, I saw four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, and birds of the air. And I heard a voice saying to me, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But I said, No so, Lord, for nothing common or unclean has at any time entered my mouth. But the voice answered me again from heaven, What God has cleaned you not, must not call common. Now this had was done three times, and all were drawn up again into heaven. And at that very moment, three men stood before the house where I was, having been sent to me from Caesarea. And he told about the whole story. And he said in verse 15, As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them as upon us at the beginning. Then I remembered the word of the Lord, how he said, John indeed baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. 
Verse 17, if therefore God gave them the same gift as he gave us when we believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could withstand God? When they heard these things, they became silent. They glorified God, saying, then God has also granted to the Gentiles repentance to life. So you see, at, there was that experience in the life of the Apostle Peter, who was not free at that time. But this experience brought him to the place where now he would defend the freedom in front of other Jews. He would defend them. So that was the situation. Then what happened? Then there was the birth of the Antioch church. And the approval of Barnabas, who was sent from Jerusalem... To see what was going on. You see? A new Gentile church has started in Antioch through some who, were, who had to leave Jerusalem because of persecution, went into the city of Antioch, preached the gospel, and many Gentiles came to Jesus and were converted. And now, the church of Jerusalem sent Barnabas to see what was going on. You see? So they had there the approval of the church of Jerusalem where Peter was. So that was another experience in the life of the Apostle Peter. Then there was the mission of Paul with Titus. Where Peter recognized the reality of his conversion to the Gentiles, which we have just Shared in Galatians chapter 2. That experience, you see. And then we have the situation in the book of Acts chapter 15. Which we know, which I shared with you earlier on. So we can see the different steps in the life of the Apostle Paul. Who was not a free man as an apostle. He did not receive the full revelation of what happened on the cross about our freedom in Christ and how we are now cut off from the Jewish faith or Jewish religion with all its laws and obligations and principles. We are now cut off. So it took a time in the life of the Apostle Paul step by step he was being set free to the point where after a time he was free. In the book of Galatians here what we read, he was free. But he had the fear of men. He was free because he was sitting with them. Eating with them. So he was a free man. You see, So that's a fact. That Jesus did not give to the first apostle the full revelation about freedom in Christ. It is step by step God brought them to the freedom in Christ. I think that is clear. He did not enlighten them about the conversion of Gentiles. They only still believe that Jews will have to be born again, but Gentiles were excluded. You see? So step by step, with all the experience that the Apostle Peter had, they came to the place where slowly but surely they became free in their hearts and they started to understand fully the freedom of the Christian. But Paul was not like that. Paul was on his way on the road to Damascus. On the road to Damascus. What happened to him? Jesus met him. And Jesus got him to be born again. And revealed to him, as he says in Galatians chapter 1 verse 11, revealed to him about Christ and his work on the cross. So freedom was something that was clear for the Apostle Paul. 
we shall read in the book of Galatians chapter 3 later, where he says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. You see, Paul was a free man. He was a completely free man. And Peter came to that freedom. Because when you look at the epistles of Paul, and when you look at the epistles of Peter, which he wrote at the end of his life, we see that Peter was also a free man. In the sense that freedom in Christ had become real to him. So that's the difference between Paul and Peter. Peter, that revelation came by steps. Paul was enlightened. He was enlightened in the revelation of God's grace, God's liberty, God's freedom for the Christians. Okay. Now let's go back a little bit in this uh, situation, what happened with Paul and Peter. Uh, Galatians chapter 2. We, can't, we can read from now. 14. When I saw that they were not straightforward about the truth of the gospel. We understand why. We shared it. I said to Peter before them all, if you, being a Jew, you live in the manner of Gentiles and not as the Jews, why do you compel Gentiles to live as Jews? Now Paul declares here clearly, if you being a Jew, you live in the manner of Gentiles. That means to say that you can sit with them, you can sit with anybody, you are free. Okay? You are a Jew, but you are now free from the law of the old covenant. You are no more bound to the law of the new covenant. You are still a Jew, but a converted Jew, being free from the curse of the law. You have been born again. Now you understand that you can live with a Gentile, eat with them, share with them, fellowship with them. Now, if you as a Jew, you know that you are free, and he says now, why do you compel Gentiles to live as Jews? It is by his action for what he has just done. When the Jews came, he was with the Gentiles, he left the Gentiles, and removed himself from their presence. In other words, he was saying to the Gentiles, okay, we are still supposed not to be together. That's what he's saying. Because he left them. The Jews came, he left them. So he's saying to the Gentiles, I am a Jew, I can sit with you, I am free, but now, you and I, we must be separated. We, you must live, we must now live like a Jew. That's what he says. If you being a Jew, you live in the manner of Gentiles and not as the Jews, why do you compel Gentiles to live as Jews? In other words, he brings by fear of men, hypocrisy, he brings the Gentiles to now experience the law of the old covenant where Jews and Gentiles could not live together and eat together and sit together. So that was what irritated Paul. To see Peter compromise and act like an hypocrite because of the fear of men. That was the whole situation. And Paul did not appreciate that. He was angry. He stood up and he rebuked Peter and he stood against him in front of everybody. That's what he's saying. In front of everybody. He, did, he, he didn't fear. Do you, can you see how when God's revelation 
is in your heart and you are convict such you have such conviction to maintain that truth to defend that truth how you can rise up in the spirit and confront and stood against whosoever whosoever would try to withstand him or go against the truth and mainly when you know you know the truth but you act against the truth because of the fear of men that what irritated the apostle paul i mean seriously and uh, he was not afraid to rebuke peter who was the first apostle the leader of the church of jerusalem at this time he was not afraid stood against him and he told him the truth and i believe that this is what relationship is all about and so many times we cannot stand for the truth but we have got to grow pastors leaders of churches when the truth is revealed to us we have to stand for the truth defend the truth of god's word and this is what the apostle paul did and you say but he shouldn't have done that before everybody but you know when you are led by the holy spirit when the holy spirit tells you to do something peter did uh, paul did not act according to his flesh or reacted because of his anger no i believe he was led by the holy spirit he stood against peter and he spoke the truth and i believe that this was a way or a platform for the apostle peter to grow and to have victory so i believe that this is a nice example where the men of god shall stand for the truth and even christian stand for the truth and not being concerned about what people say so that's the end for today may god bless you and we shall continue next session thank you information about CTMI, visit our website ctmi.org.